guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about networking tips for brand new medical coding students and medical coders. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, networking, making those connections, making the, the world uh, more connectable through the internet or through going to meetings. So when you are brand new in medical coding, of course, you're going to have your school that's going to have other students that are like you. Um, but one of the great places that you can start off at with networking is LinkedIn. Now, this is not an ad for LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is a great place to meet other um, professionals just like you and you can actually follow like the places that you want to work okay so if you're interested in working for a big hospital you can see that they have a linkedin page you can follow them there and you you know putting in your information about medical coding being a medical coding student um, it's going to attract all of the other HIM or health information professionals that work at that facility um, so that you can start to make connections that way as well. If you are one of those people who will start <laughs> uh, trying to friend people uh, that way, that is totally fine. That's just what LinkedIn is for. I get people all the time that are connecting with me uh, due to the show. I have a LinkedIn for the show. Now, I resisted LinkedIn for a long time because it's just another app <laughs> that I have to go on. But um, you know, people like to connect with connect with me uh, from the show through LinkedIn, and that's totally fine. I have it, uh, Medical Coding with Blue. So if you're interested, you know, be sure to check it out. Give me a a follow if you wish. I have over 800 followers now on LinkedIn. Uh, but I will say about LinkedIn when you are deciding to do that, and you can even follow the association that you are going to sit for their certification. If you don't know which certification you're going to sit for yet, you can certainly follow HEMA, the American Health Information Management Association, and AAPC, the American Academy of Professional Coders. And again, it's going to start putting up a lot of like um, recommendations for people who are affiliated with those associations as well. So you can start your also your networking that way. Um, but I will say this: online behavior on LinkedIn. <laughs> now, because I connect with people from the show and also people who are connected with other people on LinkedIn will also connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I've seen a lot of different uh, people come through there and a lot of students. I've seen a lot of students, some that are going through Practicode, some that are going through a program, and I will see them start to complain on LinkedIn. This is the worst place for you to complain. Do not complain on LinkedIn, okay? Uh, I actually had to unfollow this one lady because she was just doing the most, okay? She was literally complaining about Practicode. I'm a customer and I should be uh, having my, my questions answered. They also are very clear. AAPC is very clear. This is not a hands-on teaching. That this is a, you're going at your own pace and they'll give you the response, but that's it, you know? Uh, so it's it's not a place to complain and to voice, you know, your thoughts on how you feel about this program or that program. It is more about introducing you to the to the world of health information. That's how people get connected on there. I've met uh, quite a few people that, you know, they're very cool, you know, since I've, I've joined LinkedIn. Um, and I've seen a lot of really good articles come out. I follow some really interesting people. <laughs> uh, Project Converge being one of them. I really do like this, the world of CDI, and that is a CDI or clinical documentation improvement, clinical documentation integrity, uh, driven platform <laughs> uh, creator on there. So uh, that is something that if you're interested in that, you could certainly put in a CDI. You could certainly follow ACTIS, um, the Association for Clinical Documentation Improvement Specialists, ACDIS. Uh, so there's a lot of just different things you can connect with a lot of different people and organizations and that you can start out, you know, doing that. You could talk about your journey. You could talk about that you're in school. Um, again, I would, I would with, withhold complaints about learning and anything like that. Uh, you can talk about the things that you learn that are fascinating to you. Uh, you can certainly talk about that. You want to be as professional as possible. Um, Please don't go on there and tell everybody that you're applying and no one wants to hire you and because you have no experience and you're trying to do this for your family. Guys, don't do it. 
it's just it looks bad because everybody can see you doing it and then the more connections that you have the more their connections are going to see if somebody decides to comment on your post so or or react to it or whatever so that's something that you really have to make sure that you keep tabs on the things that you say because every this this health information field is very small there are thousands of us <laughs> but this is a very small community because there's 10 degrees of separation and if you don't know what that means trust me somebody <laughs> will know you in the 10 people uh or will know about you or know somebody that knows somebody who knows you uh in those 10 people so that is something that you really have to keep in mind when you are uh in websites like linkedin you want to be on your p's and q's there's also a lot of employers that will post uh, jobs. You know, sometimes they will post. Uh, some of them you have to kind of watch out for, especially the ones that are overseas. You definitely don't want to go with those because those are not for you. Uh, but the ones that are, of course, here and, you know, maybe it's a local hospital or whatever, then certainly you can go and check out their website and see. Um, and that's something that you can do that do from there uh, they do allow you to post your resume and some people do uh, I recommend strongly when you post your resume that you do not post your home address okay that's just ridiculous that people would post their own home addresses but I see a lot of them do it and um, you can put the city and state that you are in certainly uh, but you do not need to post your home address okay so I would keep that information off of there um, you can make it visible to like uh, recruiters that is totally fine I don't do like people have asked me hey blue do you help revamp people's LinkedIn no I don't <laughs> because I am not really tech savvy as you might have noticed I don't even edit my videos okay uh, that's how tech savvy I am right I just point and shoot and that's it <laughs> uh, shoot the video and that's it I upload it and that's about as far as my tech savviness goes uh, so what, what I have on my LinkedIn is just very basic same thing with my Facebook page that uh, you all begged me for that I did not want uh, I went ahead and made a page for medical coding with blue so if you're interested in that you can totally uh, connect with me on Facebook as well or meta meta whatever <laughs> uh, but again it's just another networking place you can go to you uh, should also attend your local chapter meetings I know that when students are students they can attend those chapter meetings uh, so if you are with AHIMA the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders either association you belong to um, they do have their meetings uh, I know AAPC I think they have them monthly uh, uh, AHIMA has theirs quarterly if, if I go with my <laughs> what I have uh, my invites uh, it's always quarterly so uh, but yeah you can totally make connections there as well you can apply with the temp agency now the temp agency is a great place to register yourself especially while you're still in school and I'm gonna keep telling y'all about the wonders of the temp agency because that was how I got my start um, the temp agency doesn't require you to have experience and they're not going to turn you down but they are going to you know help you to look for a job this is another person that's going to help you to look for a job and they are going to advocate for you to get a job because if you aren't working they aren't making money so they want you working <laughs> uh, and you can just tell them whatever hours you're available if you're available um, only certain days of the week you know sometimes with certain temp agencies they will have you call in in the morning if you are available and they'll see if there's any orders that came in and this may not even be for a medical coding position just yet let's just say that um, they need somebody to fill in you know uh, with release of information or something like that if you've already had your HIPAA training okay that that does qualify you for release of information uh, but sometimes it's just to fill in you know uh, just to kind of you know just take somebody's spot for just a couple of days sometimes it's for a week or so you know uh, typically when they do have medical coding positions it's because somebody's gonna be out it's not somebody that's gonna be out only a day they don't call in a temp agency for that <laughs> uh, but if you want to go ahead and, and start applying for those positions even though you don't have your certification yet uh, if you've completed most of your program again that's a great place to start making those connections sometimes they'll say well you know we have a scheduling assignment 
you, you really don't want to do scheduling. You really don't want to do reception because if you're really good at reception, they're going to keep you in reception. Okay. They're not even going to consider you for anything else because reception is hard to find good people. Right. And with the telephone work, with doing the scheduling, that's, that's not going to enhance your skill and that's not even going to allow you to even use your skill. So you want to pick assignments that are going to use your time wisely, okay? Even while you are in school. A lot of people will tell me, well, Blue, I want to get experience before I get certified. Well, it's hard enough for certified medical coders to find jobs. And if you don't have a certification yet, you've got another uh, uh, uphill battle to go through. Uh, but it's not impossible, okay? And, and working with the temp agency does uh, help to make it possible for you to get in. So there's a lot of different positions and they just call them all kinds of names. But do talk to the temp agency and tell them, hey, I'm in school to be a medical coder. I would like something in medical coding or maybe even if they have something in medical billing, that is okay too. This is going to get you around those people in that facility that are going to be doing the hiring, okay? They're going to be uh, looking at the candidates that are coming in or the candidates that are applying. So that is something that you can use to help augment your work search, you know? Uh, just spending your time there and making those connections that way. But yes, the temp agency is the way to go, guys. Um, they are going to be there and they are going to be your cheerleader <laughs> to get you in those positions. So that's just my advice anyway. A lot of people will foo-foo me on uh, the temp agency. And oh no, I don't want that. I want this. And okay, guys, but I'm just letting you know. Uh, you are in for an uphill battle when it comes to these jobs. Uh, when trying to find a brand uh, job as a brand new medical coder. Okay, so I'm just trying to help you and that was what I did because I went through that too where oh Well, you don't have experience and we can't hire you. I hate that, you know, but I mean as a veteran now I understand why they do it um, There's a lot of schools that do not prepare the students well at all when they get out there into the real world and so a lot of these new medical coders are left adrift and they're just doing basically what they can to get in and they're just not prepared a lot of those times and and unfortunately they don't know how to study on their own and they think that you know people are going to be out there to help them and to coach them if you do get that you are incredibly blessed <laughs> because it doesn't always happen okay so you have to be prepared and prepare yourself i have over 800 videos on my channel and all with different tips and, and I do talk about like, you know, how to get started and, and um, how to study on your own so that you become more proficient, right, uh, at coding. And so that will help you when you're out there seeking a job. But, you know, it's up to you. You do have to do your research, guys, okay? This is very independently driven. This is very, um, you know, self-guided self in a lot of ways. And so, you know, these videos are meant to help you uh, to know where to go. <laughs> uh, so yes, those are my suggestions on how to get uh, networking, get to networking. Uh, but yes, you always want to be a positive force. You don't want to complain about the circumstances because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, people are going to say, oh, that person just complains, you know, and you don't want to, you don't want to be that way. Okay. You want to be positive. You want to learn from every experience. You want to take advice appropriately, not from everybody, okay? We need to use some common sense when we're taking in advice, all right? Because there are some people that are going to be negative and tell you, oh no, you need to get this and you need to get that. All you need is one certification to start with, okay? All you need is one, one. And uh, you need to be persistent and you need to have a really good resume, okay? So those are the things that will help you to network. Um, Going to conference is another really great networking um, place as well. If you are with AHIMA, if you say, for instance, you have the student membership, which is so nice, especially at conference time, because you get a really good deal on going to conference. <laughs> uh, AHIMA will have their conference in person this year in October in Ohio. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I will leave the link. Uh, right now, there's early registration going on. Um, so going to these places is a great place to network i mean you're actually going to meet people and you're actually going to get to you know spend time talking with them and things like that because nothing is better than going to like the exhibit hall and being able to just walk around and visit with all the vendors 
and sometimes the vendors are out there looking for candidates and some of them are out there just to kind of recruit for like a school program or something so there's just a lot of different opportunities okay there's a lot of different people that you can meet when you go to conference um obviously if you are still a student uh the ceus do not apply to you because you cannot earn continuing education units uh, be well, you can earn them, but they will not apply towards your credential when you get it. Okay. To get uh, CEUs or continuing education units, they will only be valid if they were earned after you get your certification. Okay. So that is with either association. So if you are earning CEUs now and thinking that, oh yeah, you'll be prepared uh, when you when you get your certification, think again. Okay. They have to have been earned after you get your certification. And that's just the way that it is because, you know, that's the way that the rules are. <laughs> and you can check the candidate hand guides for either association and it'll tell you that as well. So uh, that is something to keep in mind when you're out there and you're thinking, oh, yeah, well, I'm spending all this money so I can get my CEUs now. No, until you get your certification, those CEUs will not count. OK, so that's just something to know. Uh, but it is a great place to start learning. Right. And uh, they do have the like the new people, newcomer um, socials and mixers and things like that. So if you are brand new, you'll you'll meet a lot of other um, a lot of other uh, graduates or even students themselves, you know, so that's something that's it's nice <laughs> because then you get to connect with new people that are just like you in the same boat, you know, so uh, that it's not from your area, you know, so but anyway, uh, that's just my advice. Uh, I really like, uh, you know, just being able to connect with different, you know, medical coders and and sometimes like when you see them and um, like when I've gone to conference years before, and you can kind of spot other medical coders <laughs> when you're in the airport. You haven't introduced yourselves yet. You can kind of tell just by looking at them if they're a coder or not. And I've done that. I think I was in, gosh, where was I? I was in Baltimore. I'd gone to Baltimore that year. And uh, <laughs> I was in the airport. And they had, of course, the welcome. You know, uh, they have a station set up, Ahima does, in the airports to like you know give you like the little water bottles and all this other good little goodie bag and things and so as i'm walking over there and i see this lady she's walking and it's like are you a coder and she's like yeah she's like are you here for the conference too and i go i am and she goes oh my gosh <laughs> so you can she goes how did you know i was a coder i said you once you know, once you're a coder, you can spot other coders, you know. <laughs> and so I kept seeing her throughout the conference. It was so neat and it was funny. And that's how you make your connections. Like, you know, that's how, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. Oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. So, again, it's a great place to connect and network when you are uh, going to these conferences. They are a little pricey. But again, if you have the student membership, it's a lot cheaper. It's really fun to go to when it's cheaper like that. <laughs> uh, and as you get into the field, sometimes you will, your employer may or may not pay for you to go. It really all depends. I am not high up enough in the food chain currently. <laughs> so I have to pay for myself, which is fine because it's an investment in my education. That's how I look at it. So, uh, but anyway, yes, those are my tips for networking. Um, you never know who you are going to be connecting with. So, you know, always keep an open mind to everybody. Um, you know, work on your professionalism, work on your professional behavior as far as like speaking and speaking clearly, uh, because that's always good. You don't ever want to be known as a person who, oh yeah, I met that person. And I could barely hear them because they mumbled. You know, I've known people who do that. Okay. Uh, so that is just something that, you know, that's my advice anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. If you like this video, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if it helped you. And I will see you all next time. Bye.